everyone, welcome back to On the Flip Side. My name is Adam Shawwalker, your host, and today we're going to be checking out this new EP, Portals, the first uh, solo release from Metallica's very own Kirk Hammett. This was dropped as a Record Store Day exclusive, and while I wasn't able to make it into my local record stores for Record Store Day, I was still pretty interested to check this one out. I mean, other than Jason Newstead's side project and the collaboration with Lou Reed, this is one of the few moments where you get to hear an isolated element of the mammoth that is Metallica. And I do think this is a pretty cool little EP. This collection of tracks explore a lot of ideas that, for where this is coming from, are pretty interesting. Hammett's takes on some of these callback riffs and licks are really well thought out. It's kind of like the majority of these songs are written with the early Metallica material in mind. I'm hearing a lot of Orion and a lot of Call of Cthulhu on these tracks. And that does make sense as this EP sounds kind of like a collection of tracks uh, that could have evolved or been developed into a lot of like the uh, bigger Metallica instrumentals. And it's, it's kind of hard to ignore that link. I mean, detaching Hammett from Metallica, it's pretty hard. The sound that he has is so firmly rooted in Metallica that to try and reframe it and put it under a different lens is kind of difficult. So with that in mind, the first track, Maiden and the Monster, hits on this surprisingly melodic wave. This song has a really huge sound that I wasn't actually expecting. Uh, actually, the production of all of these songs seems to have been approached from a really intelligent standpoint. There's a depth to the mixes and a lot of really really nice, comfortable headroom. And honestly, it's kind of uncharacteristic and uncanny to hear that coming from where this is coming from. <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything to be bad production-wise, but I wasn't expecting it to be like pretty damn good. And despite these songs being a little bit long-winded, there is a very good sense of not revealing your hand all at once and kind of letting things build naturally. I also really wasn't expecting this release to be as paced as well as it is. That first track, Maiden in the Monster, is a very broad, sweeping track that has a pretty lean opening segment. The song builds in intensity for an end that I'd say uh, fits pretty well with what you would expect but kind of subverts expectations with a very abrupt ending. Still works out pretty well, though. The Djinn uh, kind of puts some of this release into perspective. This track specifically sounds like it's kind of trying to really stand apart from a typical Metallica sound, reaching into a much proggier direction, maybe not in any forms of technical display, but there's a lot of really forward-thinking passages on this track. I would almost be interested to see how lyrics could have been applied to this song, but I don't know if it would ruin the effect that these tracks have, as the very clearly feel intentionally structured as instrumentals. The solo on this track does feel a little bit silly with all of these very uh, lofty uh, sounding backing tracks that feel a little bit more prog heavy as opposed to the solo, which is a very uh, standard Kirk Hammett wah blues fest, but that's not to say it's bad. It's actually remarkably better than most of the modern era Metallica guitar solos. High Plains Drifter is probably the furthest step away from the comfortable thrash metal bubble of this EP. This is a really grandiose theatrical song that blends a lot of different elements. There's almost a folky orchestral feel for the intro of this track that leads into a sweeping string section, and it does actually work pretty well, and despite this being the shortest track, this song feels very big. The song has a very tight grasp of scale and builds to this really interesting, classically inspired guitar segment, which doesn't always land perfectly, but usually is saved by the string accompaniment. This song does also have this weird part about like four minutes in that I can't really figure out. I mean, I think it's a woman singing, but I can't be sure if it's that or if it's just like a really high-pitched violin or maybe a synth, but it does sound a little bit auto-tuned to me. At points, the delivery in the timbre of what I'm assuming is the voice seems a little bit unnatural. And again, that is assuming it is a real person singing. Uh, this is just like a minor thing that kind of threw me for a bit of a loop. The last track, The Incantation, definitely feels the most inspired by classic Metallica material with a really big focus on calling back to some of the early instrumentals, like I said before, especially with this watery, stormy motif. This EP feels like it's pulling especially heavily from Ride the Lightning. With all that being said, this song will definitely be the most familiar sounding track to fans of Metallica. That does also come with the caveat that this track does a better job uh, than actually most modern Metallica songs at having a really nice, cohesive song structure and good solo progressions. It's kind of odd to listen to this after listening to Metallica for so long because it kind of makes me wonder uh, what happens in the middle between Kirk's writing and the final product and working with the other guys in the band. And I mean, this realistically is a pretty standard instrumental metal EP. There's nothing totally mind-blowing going on here, but with that being said, it does make me wonder why Metallica have been so slow to release new good music, because what's here is pretty solid. Uh, part of me wants to think that it's entirely possible
possible that we're only now seeing a uh, recovery from the tragic loss of Kirk Hammett's cell phone in 2015, which contained hundreds of riff ideas that he had written over several years. Anyway, this EP is pretty solid, and admittedly far better than I thought it was going to be. I'm very interested to see if we're going to get more solo releases from Kirk Hammett, or if this is kind of doomed to be uh, like the only solo project he does, but uh, regardless, it is cool to see this coming together and being a net positive for Kirk and ultimately, I think, Metallica. Like I said, I'm not totally blown away by this, but I am pleasantly surprised. I'm hoping this does well enough that we get some more material from him, we get some maybe uh, more speedy releases from the Metallica camp in general. I'm also hoping this is a bit of foreshadowing for whenever Metallica decide to put out a new album. I would really, really like for more of these sounds to be incorporated and applied there, because uh, it's pretty fresh in comparison to Hardwired. Anyway, I think Portals is a pretty solid six. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this one in the comments below. And remember to like and subscribe and check out my Instagram, my Reverb store, and my Depop. Links to those are in the description below. And thank you all so much again, and we'll see you on the flip side.